I've had the Google Pixel 5 for three months. Let's talk about that. What's up everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back to another video. Well, like the intro said, I've used the Pixel 5 for about three months. If you watched my long-term review where I had it a month before everybody else did, I'll leave a link up here for all the cards for that particular thing. I talked about all the things that I loved in the Pixel 5. And as is very apparent with a lot of the comments, evidently I'm paid by Google to talk about how good the Pixel 5 is. So let me just get this right out of the way. Not paid by Google, not paid at all. I am part of Team Pixel where they do send me devices, which I am very thankful for, but they don't pay me to say anything. Um, yeah, I don't get money for them. They don't see the videos before anybody else does, like all of you do. I just really thought the Pixel 5 was that good. And spoiler alert, even after three months of use, it's still my daily driver that I use every single day. And much like that last video, I'm going to talk about the look, the feel, the performance, the speaker under the glass, which is a very popular subject, videos, photos, the whole nine yards. So let's just jump straight into the video. So let's talk about that look in the field perspective. This is a six inch display that has the fingerprint scanner on the back, no face unlock or anything like that. Has an incredible 89 plus percent screen to body ratio in a very small footprint. This is something that's just slightly bigger than the Pixel 4a and smaller than the Pixel 4a 5G. So if you're looking at the 4a 5G, it's definitely the XL model, uh, but the Pixel 5 is the nice balance. I gotta be honest, I'm a big phone guy and have always been a big phone guy, the Pro Maxes and the things like that, but wielding a smaller phone for these last several months has been actually really enjoyable. It's one of those things like, I love having the big screen for the media consumption and things of that nature, but the Pixel 5 does a lot of things right, especially at its price point and size. So again, from the physical perspective, fingerprint scanner that's on the back. Um, also, you have a nice little like, the back matte type finish isn't the OnePlus kind of scratchy style case, but I feel comfortable rocking the Pixel 5 without a case at all. One thing that I saw pop up in the three months of my usage is this report that the glass is pulling away from the frame in the upper left-hand corner where uh, the, the fa front-facing camera is or something like that. I didn't experience that. Um, I haven't noticed anything like that. When I hold the phone up like this, I still see it pressed against the body. Um, Google comes out and says that that's part of the design. I have no idea why that would be part of the design, but I, I didn't experience anything like that. So I can't exactly say why that would be part of the design. And while I'm talking about the front firing speaker, let me just show you, there's two cards that I'm gonna show right here back to back where I have done two videos specifically about what does the Pixel 5 sound like compared to the 4XL, the 4A, and now the 4A 5G? The TLDR out of those two videos, it's not as bad as everybody is making it out to be. Go listen to those videos if you think that you really don't believe what you're hearing right now. It doesn't sound nearly as bad as everybody makes it out to be. Here's a small snippet between two different devices so you can hear what I'm talking about. About a width away in terms of that, and here we go. When you stepped into my life, such a magic feeling, we tore down my walls. Okay, that was the Pixel 4A 5G. And now this is the Pixel 5, two notches. When you stepped into my life, such a magic feeling, we tore down my walls. So again, for me, not that bad. The rear firing speaker is definitely loud. It's not something that's like, oh my God, this is trash. It's really not that bad at all. So between the glass pulling away on the one side, which I don't experience, and the, the speaker being an issue, 
Again, those are the two biggest things that everybody complains about in the Pixel 5. And I don't have any problems with those things, so I can't speak to that. Let's talk about the performance over the last three months. This thing comes equipped with a 765G, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and has the 18 watt fast charger. Look, the screen on time and the battery life over the last three months has been amazing. This is an all day phone. Hands down, no question, full stop. All day phone, the battery life is amazing. I don't know how they get the battery life so good out of that. Well, probably because it has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery that's in a small footprint pixel. But again, this is still a 5G phone, which means when you're out and about, the 5G should suck the life out of the battery like early versions of LTE when we went to 4G. But with the Pixel 5, it simply doesn't do that. The 4A, the 4A 5G, and the Pixel 5 are all battery sippers. And I have no issues at all going all day as a power user. I'm talking multiple hours of YouTube per day, some gaming with Roblox or Among Us or the golf game that I play, easily work emails, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. I'm on all of those things quite a bit. Still an all day battery life for me. I will routinely get off the charger at 6.30 in the morning and go all the way till 10.30 and still have anywhere between 16 and 21% of my battery left. Absolutely no question. Best battery life I've had in a phone in a really, really long time. This is a Pixel device after all, so let's talk about the lenses on the back of the phone. This is a dual wielding type photo lens. We have a 16 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide that is on the back and then in a combination with a 12.2 megapixel f1.7 wide so those are the two that you have on the back and the telephoto is all software based and on the front facing you have an 8 megapixel f2.0 for that front facing or selfie shooter cam i've talked about it before i have a ton of videos that i'm going to link up here because i have done a tremendous amount of content on the pixel 5 the stabilization is straight up black magic. I don't know how they've done it. The Pixel 5 more than holds its own against a Samsung Note 20 Ultra, as well as an iPhone 11 Pro Max, as well as an iPhone 12 Pro. Check out these videos. That is a bold statement. The Pixel 5 can run in the same crowd as the iPhone 12 Pro. No question, hands down. It just depends on what you're going for. The 4K 60 frames a second and the 4K stabilization and all of that is really, really good. The point and shoot portrait mode, still the king when it comes to all portrait modes. The Pixel cannot be stopped when it comes to that stuff. And the thing about the camera hardware that they're using, it's several years old, which is basically ancient when it comes to the technological space. The idea that the Pixel 6 and beyond are gonna have new hardware plus what they already do with this, ooh wee, I am very excited about what the Pixel has in the future when it comes to video and photo. At the end of the day, let's say, the speaker under the glass on the front is a real non-issue for me, and it's gonna be a non-issue for most folks. I don't have to worry about the thing pulling away from the front. The performance is fantastic. 4K 60 frames a second that can compete with the big boys out there. Battery life for literal days if you sip it the right way. An extreme battery saver as well makes the Pixel 5 a really, really good deal for the price point. Let me say that again really slowly so folks can hear it. Pixel 5 I think is very fairly priced considering all the things that you get out of the Pixel phone. You're getting exclusive Pixel drops that come out. December's the next Pixel drop. Crazy good camera, crazy good point and shoot, battery life that last days, 5G device, everything to love about the Pixel for, I think during Black Friday, it's gonna be significantly cheaper, but for $699. So that's a really great price for ones that can compete with the big boys that are above a thousand bucks. Now, there's the 4A 5G. The 4A 5G is probably the second, arguably the best device of the year, only behind or in comparison with the Pixel 4A. Just my personal opinion, call me a fanboy if you want. You're not gonna find any better value. I am not alone when I talk about the 4A. The 4A 5G, and I will have another video about the 4A 5G, is probably the only device that I would buy instead of the Pixel 5. But again, there's some trade-offs that you have there. You don't get the wireless charging with the 4A 5G. You get the wireless charging with the Pixel 5. You have the reverse wireless charging with the Pixel 5, but you have no headphone jack. You have a headphone jack in the 4A 5G. 
At the end of the day, it really depends. Smaller form factor and wireless charging? Pixel 5, no question. You want that larger screen with the headphone jack? Pixel 4a 5G. That's what makes the Pixel 5 so great, is it fits somebody perfectly, but if you don't like it, you can go get a very similar, if not identical experience in another Pixel phone, which is again why I'm so excited about where Pixel is going. I believe that the Pixel 5 is the turning point for Google when it comes to what the next iteration of their hardware is going to look like. So that's it, that's all I have. Thanks for watching. And as always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below, and we'll see you next time. <music>